uh, just show that Kant was, at the end of the day, a sloppy thinker, didn't integrate his philosophy at all, um, and it was a bit of a mishmash, just a fancy facade thrown together, like the uh, Guggenheim. Um, the idea that you're not supposed to get any benefit, um, that's a common misreading of Kant, actually. Common misreading of Kant. Now, <laughs> I don't mean to be an authoritarian, but who's your authority saying that that's a misreading? Why, are you sure everybody's misinterpreting it? Um, because like I've said earlier in this video series, um, Kant is interpreted the same way by objectivists as by everybody else, but the objectivists object to what Kant stands for. Everybody else thinks it's great. Everybody knows he's against reason. Everybody knows he's in favor of duty and self-sacrifice. Everybody knows he, he, he believes man is a, a radically evil creature uh, that has to act on the basis of others, uh, and whose whole moral action has to be based on society. Now, an interesting question. What would Kant tell you to do on a desert island? Would you act on a desert island in a way that everybody in society could act? I mean, what the hell does that mean if you're on a desert island? You're alone. So objectivism would tell you, like it always tells you, it says, well, you want to stay alive. What do you have to do to stay alive? In this case, you're going to need shelter and food. Well, okay, let's build some shelter and look for food. And that would be how you get started. But Kant's moral imperative doesn't get you anywhere because it's based on other people and the good of society and the fact that you should act out of duty and sacrifice. Who would you sacrifice to and for what duty and what the hell would that do on a desert island? So that shows you what his ethics is for. Nothing. Ethics that doesn't do you any good on a desert island is ethics that doesn't do you any good in reality. And the question of ethics and other people is called politics. What he talks about is that this is the differentiation between autonomous action and heteronymous action. Heteronymous action is action for the sake of uh, some material benefit or like, some pleasure, that sort of thing. And you're acting for that. Whereas uh, an autonomous action is for the sake of reason alone, for the sake of duty, doing something because it is the for the sake of reason alone or duty. Now they equate reason and duty there as, as against heteronymous action, which is for the material end. Now um, reason and the material end would coincide. You wouldn't have a material end that was non-reasonable, I, I would hope. And you wouldn't have a reasonable end with no material um, with no material result. So you wouldn't have, in other words, you wouldn't have some action that doesn't have a consequence in reality. The right thing and not for any other reason. Aristotle talks about this as well. If someone just goes around and uh, is a hedonist, we wouldn't say they're a good person because they're, they're just fulfilling their, their base pleasure, basically their animal instincts. Why wouldn't we say they're a good person? I mean, you're right, I wouldn't say they're a good person because we have the value of life and death, and a hedonist might value things that are actually bad for them, and that actually destroy their happiness in the long term, but they're too, too short term to know it. So, I believe they're bad, but, but why necessarily do we have to ju make that judgment? And Kant is saying, well, you can't do that and say it's moral. If you're doing it, if that's incidental, if any benefit is incidental, then that's fine. But you can't act for the sake of the benefit. Right. Sacrifice yourself from a sense of duty. You cannot benefit from it. A benefit destroys the moral... Now, he says here the benefit is, is incidental. Right? And then he says you can't act for the benefit, though. It has to be an action for the reason or for the duty or whatever, for the imperative, categorical imperative. It can't be an action for the material end. If a material end comes along, he says that's okay. Now, stronger interpretations say you can't get a material end for yourself, no matter what, you, that, uh, or it's not duty. Uh, weaker interpretation says you can get an incidental material end, uh, and it's okay as long as it wasn't for that. So it's simply a case of strong and weak interpretations of the fact that man is evil and cannot act for himself. You can act in such a way where it's the right thing to do and you accrue a benefit, but you can't be doing it 
for the benefit. See? Because otherwise it's a heteronomous action and it's no longer moral. Now why is it immoral to act for your own benefit? That's it. You just said it, Zorio. You cannot act for your own benefit. You have to sacrifice yourself as a sense of duty for the sake of nothing. You just said the words that you objected to me saying a couple minutes ago. Uh, look, thanks for the interaction. It's been great. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. If you made it this far all the way to the end. Um, I haven't even posted the first one of these videos up, but it'll be coming up soon. Um, I don't know, it's going to be like 10 or 12 videos long. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not going to finish. There's only a couple minutes left in his last video. But it's, um, we're just rehashing and rehashing and rehashing. And like I said at the very start of this whole thing, I said we're not going to get anywhere. So I hope somebody got a benefit from it because Zorio still is going to believe that Kant doesn't believe any of the things I says he does.